Hello and welcome to my review of the Space Marines Dorito Contemptor Dreadnought. Wait a minute, that's not right. There we go, that's much better. This Doredio Dreadnought is of course for Warhammer the Horus Heresy and was originally released in this box set, the Legiones Astartes Battle Group, but you could also pick it up separately on release day uh, for £50. I know, quite pricey, but still uh, cheaper than the um, resin dreadnought uh, that Forge World made that I picked up earlier this year, you know, when you include all the, the weapons and things. But the great thing about that kit was it was way, way quicker to build and you could pick the actual weapons that you liked uh, and then you know pick the others pick the others up at a later date but anyway this uh, dreadnought consists of 166 uh, plastic components and uh, the top weapon the aeolus uh, missile launcher um, stays the same you can't swap that but the main weapon um, you can have the ambulus uh, auto cannons or you can have the uh, hellfire plasma cannonade which sounds really really cool but it's not as good as the um, plasma cannon on the top of the just the normal predators but anyway at 50 pounds uh, puts it at exactly the same price point as the plastic leviathan dreadnought which is a bit bigger and is mainly focused on short range but that leviathan dreadnought does consist of fewer parts it consists of 142 uh, components this Doredio Dreadnought actually consists of more components than the Assault uh, Leviathan Dreadnought, which is 153. So out of all the Dreadnoughts so far in Horus Heresy, this Doredio does include the most. And I dare say, I'm tempting fate here, that when they do release, because I'm pretty sure they will release, uh, the um, another one of these with the other two missing uh, long range weapons and the uh, you know top carapace mounted uh, weapon that that will also consist of more than all of the other dreadnoughts so you're getting a lot of parts for your money but what you're not getting for your money well let's find out in the review format of this review is as follows uh, i'll go through the miniature how easy it was to build look at all the detail the options then we'll look at the spare parts and we'll go through all of the size comparisons with as many Horus Heresy uh, vehicles and things as I've uh, got my hands on. Lots of Dreadnoughts coming up, Knights, you name it. Uh, and then finally, at the end of the review, I will go through all of its rules. Of course, just its uh, Horus Heresy rules. So let's have a look at this Doredio Dreadnought and uh, I'll talk a little bit about it. So here it is. It's, I, I can't fully recommend it. I'll put that out there straight away. If you've been after one of these Dreadio Dreadnoughts for such a long time and um, you think it's really cool and, and all the rest of it, then yeah, you know, pick it up. You, you didn't need to pick up this box set to get it. I'll put that out there. I mean, it, it's a good box set to get some miniatures a bit cheaper, uh, but it's not the kind of gateway box set uh, that, that you might think. Uh, unless you really, really, for some reason, you really like these Mark III um, variants. I like the charm of the older Mark III, if I'm perfectly honest. But anyway, this video isn't about Mark III armour. It's about this puppy. So as you can see, uh, you can move the top uh, missile launcher. You can even um, change the trajectory, which is cool. One thing you can't do is detach the weapons. You, you can't really pose the weapons that well. I mean, if you look at the angles there, and, and that's with me squeezing them uh, in the best sort of right angle I possibly could. The thing is, is the ammunition feeds. What they should have done, what they really should have done, is employed the ammunition feed from the uh, castigator, which I've recently finished building, right here. Look at that. This is like the best feature of this kit. Uh, uh, are these links so you can pose it in any position i've never seen games workshop whoa i've never uh, seen games workshop do anything like this and it reminds me of dr ock uh, of spider-man really that's what they should have done they should have miniaturized this 
uh, onto these cables. I, I suppose you could argue, well, super, that is just going to be for the auto cannon. Okay, I, I get it, but still would have been worth uh, doing because uh, you could have posed this in any position you wanted. As it stands, you can only pose it in one position because these ammunition um, banks, the magazine banks or whatever, they, they glue on to that just one way and then this is built in one way that it will only go into there like that. So they've made a kind of ball joint there and this joint that moves the gun outwards and inwards, but they haven't made the, the ammunition feed movable. And you can see there's a big gap there and that's with me moving it at, at, as close as possible as I possibly could. Um, I built this in live stream if you wanted to check that out. This one, similar story, but I'm gonna have to go in there and put some green stuff in and get rid of those gaps. It's, it's really not good. Um, sorry to start the review off with a, with a big negative. Everything else is, is fine. You know, the legs are great. There's lots of pieces there. If you're uh, familiar with the Leviathan Dreadnought, you get a number of different, uh, I wanna say prow, you know, like boat uh, options here, um, which is great. I think you get three options. You know, the weapons are good, like the plasma, is fantastic. It might be worth you building the plasma instead of this autocannon one. Um, you know, if I had my way and could have gone back to, back in time, well, I, I obviously wouldn't use me going back in time to just fix one model, but I would have purchased the uh, resin um, Doredio with the autocannons and I would have um, built this one uh, with, the plas with the plasma cannonade. That's if I, if I had uh, the, the chance of going back, but I don't. So this is what we're, we're stuck with. Uh, this Dreadnought, which is kind of, you know, stud with its autocannons, slightly raised, I guess. And it just looks like that. It's not the best. Um, it really isn't. And it does, and I think I built it in a couple of streams. Uh, so you can have it walking forward, but again, you can't really pose those, those weapons. Um, other than that, as I say, the detail is good. You know, it's a, it's a Space Marine vehicle um, in plastic. Uh, they, they haven't really cheaped out on that. I will say that the detail is, is slightly better. I will say that the detail is better on the Resin Dreadnought, you know, as usual, more sense of depth, more rivets. Um, the targeting, you know, len lens thing is, is better. There's more on it. Um, but, you know, what you are getting with this plastic one is different heads and different um, front chest uh, pieces. And also less hassle removing um, slippage and um, you know extra bits of resin in these coils so there is that uh, but it will take you longer to build than the resin and less options but it is cheaper so you've got to weigh all of those things up uh, with these uh, Horus Heresy kits. Let's have a look at the spare parts then uh, so here they are you do get a fair amount so although you get 160 odd uh, parts a lot of them will be spare so here's the plasma I think someone asked me if you could swap uh, the weapons out um, uh, in one of the streams. I think you can, but you, you will need a fair amount of um, magnetization to do that. Uh, you know, they have provided uh, you with little holes to magnetize, so you, you know, you can put that in. The, the thing is, though, with magnetizing it, and I need to make this very, very clear, is you're going to need some strong magnets in there to, to keep that weapon. It's infected by the um, ammo belt, uh, both the weapons, and the, the ammo belt pushes the weapons out of the sockets. So while I would say you can and magnetize them with the little holes for the magnetization, it is a f actual faff. It really is. Um, so it's whether you think that's worth it instead of just picking up another one uh, or, you know, they're going to have box sets, I'm sure, at some point again. Uh, with them. Um, these are the uh, different chest plate armors. So you've got a, a traitor one, you've got a standard one, and then you've got, you know, an Aquila one, I guess. Uh, different feet for walking forward. Um, the tips for the plasma cannonade. Instead of the heavy bolters there, uh, you can opt for the heavy flamers. I don't know why. Of course, there's going to be someone in the comments that will say, oh, for point defense super and, um, you know, Lookout, sir, or whatever it is. Um, yeah, okay, fair enough. You also get a different kind of groin plate if you didn't want to go for this one. Uh, I think you only get uh, one, though. So one spare groin plate. 
Um, you do get a couple of different um, knee armor plates though. So you can go for a traitor one and a spare one. You can go for double, double plane if you wish. You can have it all plain so you can have a completely plain um, Contempt of Dreadnought. You know, spray it black and use it for, for anything, I guess. But uh, mine is most likely going to be for uh, Dark Angels. I haven't fully decided. It, it could be for Imperial Fists. I don't know yet. But uh, but there we go. Um, there are all the spare parts. A fair chunk of them. I don't know how usable they are unless you really want to magnetise those weapons. But as I say, it is an absolute pain to do so. It's not as easy as magnetising like the Leviathan, you know, for instance, that's, I mean, that's not made to magnetize, but it, it is possible and you can, you know, mix and match uh, the, the weapons there. Speaking of which, we're kind of already on the size comparison side of things. Uh, we'll just go through dreadnoughts first and then actual um, Space Marines. So here is the Leviathan Dreadnought. As you can see, same price. Uh, I don't know which gives you more presents. Uh, probably the Leviathan. Uh, it, it is bigger, um, the, the hips are the same height, uh, but you get so much more kind of chest and shoulders and arms. You know, I always found it interesting that the chest weapons are better on the Duredio, on the ranged weapon, um, which is contrary to 40k, uh, where um, it seems like the chest weapons on assault dreadnoughts uh, are better, with the ballistas, with the brutalist dreadnought having multi melters. Uh, instead of the um, Ballistas' uh, Dreadnoughts weapons. So overall, I mean, it depends which one you like the look of. Uh, I mean, game terms, yes, the Leviathan is, is brilliant and uh, will mince up other Dreadnoughts and things, but you do need that delivery method. You do need that Dreadnought drop pod um, to, to make the best use of it because it is short range. On the flip side of it, the Duredio is more longer range, can pick off units from afar, don't go for the auto cannons, obviously, they're not going to do that much damage. Um, you know, go for here's the first resin comparison go for the plasma. Um, at the moment, I mean, the best choice, of course, would be the Arachnus Las Cannons, but they're not um, releasing that variant yet. The, the thing is, I don't think I'll pick up another one of these, but I do think I'll pick up two more plastic ones than when they release, maybe even three, three more two um, Las Cannon and one Volkite just to give a bit more variety. Uh, and then I'd have five Duredios, which is all right, I guess. Um, but yeah, that's where it sort of measures up. The beauty about the, the resin one is of course, you can pose it in any which way you want because it's resin, you can heat the cables or whatever. Um, you know, there's just more option for posability. In terms of the top, it just slots in there. The plastic one is as loose as the resin one, the resin one's heavier, um, but you could still magnetize either of them um, and hot swap them. I do have the missile launcher somewhere, you know, the um, Boreas missile launcher. Uh, that works in this one, um, absolutely fine. Uh, while it does uh, kind of fit, it is a bit sort of tight to squeeze in, you really have to push it. And yeah, that, that will then happen. Um, so. Yeah, careful when you push in big things into small holes, guys. You, you can sometimes break uh, break things off. Um, but it, it does work. It would fit in at a slight firm push. Um, but yeah, saying that, it really depends on um, which one you want to go for. But saying that, you know, you can... Um, use that weapon, um, but possibly not the other weapons. Um, compared to the normal Contempt of Dreadnought, that's where it stands up. Uh, I, I still like the look of the normal plastic Contempt of Dreadnought. Um, they are a bit of a project as well, all of these Dreadnoughts are, uh, but um, yeah, even more so now um, than the, uh, the radios. Uh, compared to some tanks then, before we uh, compare it to Marines, uh, I do have, first of all, a Rhino. So quite chunky next to a Rhino, a Predator with the far better plasma cannon weapon. And I also have a Sakaran, why not? Um, and then a Land Raider. So, you know, it still holds its own. 
stomping about near near Land Raiders, as you can see. Um, it still does. So I hope those size comparisons have. So on to some uh, Space Marines then. Well, here are some brand new Mark Threes. So that's where it stands next to those. This is actually the first sort of comparison I've done with these Mark Threes on the channel. So enjoy. Um, yeah, it holds its own next to some Mark Threes. You could have a few of them surrounding it. Um, Mark Sixes right here, uh, which are kind of the same height as the Mark Threes. So again, Mark Sixes, it works. I'd probably say it works better with Mark Sixes actually. Uh, we've also got Mark Fours and old Mark Threes. So as you can see, Mark Threes, same height as the new ones. Uh, and of course, they've always been the same height as the Mark Sixes. Um, but Mark Fours are the, the smallest now. And uh, yeah, if you had this Dreadnought around some Mark Fours, it, it would still look all right, wouldn't look too bad. Um, but there we go. And then the final little comparison I like to make is just with some 40K miniatures. So I, I don't know whether you would use this with the rules and things being as they are with Primaris, uh, but we just move these out of the way. Here's a Primaris, here's Sly Marbo, and there's a standard Space Marine. Primaris does go up to the hips of the Doredio. So again, you know, it still would be quite tall compared to, uh, you know, Primaris Force, even with some Terminators around it and things. It's a shame that you can't really use it uh, with the rules at the moment. Uh, hopefully they will change that very soon. Okay, so this is my part of the review where I will go through all of the rules for the Doredio Dreadnought. You'll find him in your Lieber Astartes uh, army book. You know, either the Loyalist or the uh, Traitorus. Uh, he's, he's in both, of course. Unfortunately, he does not count as an elite choice. <laughs> he is a heavy support choice and uh, he will cost you 205 points. His stat line reads, he's a movement of seven inches, weapon skill and ballistic skill are both five, strength and toughness are both seven, six wounds, initiative four, two attacks, leadership nine, and a save of two plus. Super, how does that instantly compare to a Leviathan? Well, already you're saving 65 points. It's faster than a Leviathan, has the same ballistic skill and weapon skill. Its strength and toughness are both a little bit worse. You know, seven instead of the eight, it has one less wound at six instead of seven and it has a lot fewer attacks uh, at two instead of five, but the leadership and the save is still the same. So uh, it's a Dreadnought and it's heavy. Uh, war gear is Anvilus Autocannon Battery, twin-linked heavy bolter, four Boreas air defense missiles, Atomantic deflector, helical targeting array, and special rules, Legiones, Astartes, and Dreadnought Talon. Uh, we'll talk about the weapons in a moment. Uh, the unit may include up to one additional Legion Doredio Dreadnought at 205 points, so you don't get, you know, any more cheaper. Um, which is odd that you can only have like two in a Talon instead of three. Having three would be really, really cool, um, you know, like the uh, Leviathans can have. Any Doredio Dreadnought in the unit may replace its Anvilus Auto Cannon Battery with one of the following. A Hellfire Plasma Cannonade for plus 15 points, so that bumps it up to 100 and, uh, that bumps it up to 220. Uh, an Arachnus Heavy Last Cannon Battery, which is 20 points each, uh, or a Volkite Falconet, which is free. Any Doredio Dreadnought may replace its Twin-Linked Heavy Bolter with one of the following. Twin-Linked Heavy Flamer for free. Not sure why you'd do that though, again. Can replace uh, all of its uh, air defense missiles for an Aeolus uh, Missile Launcher, uh, which is five points, which is actually really, really good value. Um, so as you can see here, mine's standard or stock. Uh, you know, so I'm only adding an extra five points for the um, uh, missile launcher there. So, weaponry then. Uh, why are you going to pick this uh, Doredio over like the Leviathan? Well, this one here and its standard loadout is the Anvilus Autocannon Battery. It's a 48 inch range, strength 7, AP 4, heavy 4, rending 5 plus, sunder, twin linked. So that's pretty nice. You know, you, you've got that range there of popping things 
um, you know, from 48 inch ranges away. So, you know, you can take out a, I say, Devastator squad or a heavy support squad or something, you know, with the four shots and the rending five plus. It is twin linked, you know, uh, but then again, the ballistic skill is five. Uh, so that's great. Um, you don't need to pick the auto cannon though. You can pick the plasma, which is what my resin one has. Uh, and also what is this and also this and also and is also the second uh, option in this kit and the hellfire plasma cannonade sounds really really cool it's only 36 inch range though <laughs> i really think it should be 48 inch range i mean i get it it's plasma and they do have like they do have limits and things like that but you know the predator tank has an executioner plasma destroyer weapon which is crazy that weapon is a 60 inch range compared to this thing. And this is a dedicated we heavy weapons platform. Anyway, anyway, I could, I could go on all day about that. Uh, what you're getting with this Hellfire Plasma Cannonade is a 36 inch range, sustained fire, uh, strength seven, AP four, heavy six, breaching four plus, which is very nice. You know, you're getting your six shots there and they are breaching a four plus. Um, and 36 inch range is, is a good, good distance. But again, if you're up against a, a five man LAS cannon squad, which is very, very cheeky, um, they're just gonna blow this up. Uh, you know, it's gonna take two turns to get it in range. And those two turns, those 10 LAS cannon shots are probably gonna destroy it. But anyway, uh, you've got a maximal fire, which is the same range, but bumps the strength up to eight. This time you only get one shot. It's rending four plus. Uh, it gets hot, but it is a large blast, five inch. So yeah, you're getting the rending four plus, which is better. Um, and you're getting that nice five inch blast. It's not a three inch little mark or anything. It's a good ordnance five inch blast marker. So it depends whether you want to delete, you know, a blob of terminators or whatever uh, with it um, instead of, uh, you know, whether you think it's, it's worth it for that gets hot. I, I personally think it is worth it. For that, I, I just would have liked to see the range um, improve. I will just quickly touch on the other two weapons um, that will probably come in the next set. Uh, the other weapon you could give it is the Volkite Falconet, um, which is usual Volkite range of 45 inches, strength seven, AP five, heavy eight, deflag rate, twin linked and pinning. So that's good, not many um, Volkite weapons uh, pin but these eight shots would pin something. And then the uh, Arachnus Last Cannon uh, is probably the best, I think. It's a range of 48 inch range, so you've got the dedicated long range there. Strength of 10, AP two, it's heavy two, uh, Sunder, Exoshock, five plus, and twin linked. So yeah, you're, you're only getting two shots, um, so the least number of shots really, but um, they are strength 10 shots and you know exoshock is great against ad mech and things the other weapons of course uh, that you know the missile launchers the Boreas air defense missile Which is what it comes with standard is, is a long-range weapon. It's a 48 inch range Strength 8 AP 2 it's heavy one sky fire guided fire one shot So, you know, that's good if you're against any flyers, but it's Horus heresy and there aren't any plastic flyers so you're probably not so leave that at home it's a good call for games workshop not to include it in this kit straight away um however the uh, you can upgrade it to the aeolus missile launcher to get a whopping 60 inch range strength eight strength six ap3 heavy three pinning guided fire so that's very nice you know you've got your three shots there at, at um strength six but it is ap3 so it's it's a nice you know three shot missile launcher that can just delete, you know, three space marines off the table um, every turn, I think, possibly. But you've got that 60 inch range, uh, which, you know, play on your strengths, um, have this uh, with the last cannon and, um, you know, delete your, your tanks, your other dreadnoughts, your, you know, heavy support squads, uh, things like that. That's where, that's how I would use it the most. In terms of the, uh, Chess weapons, you know, the twin linked heavy flamers or the heavy bolters, obviously heavy bolters just work as, as usual. Um, they're, they're your standard 36 inch range, strength five, AP four, heavy four. I think some people might forget that they're even there, um, but it, it's worth not forgetting because you do get twin linked uh, heavy bolters. Um, so, you know, it's nice to get those uh, 
four shots there on top of uh, possibly your four shots for your Anvilus, so that's eight shots, and then your, your three for your missiles, that's 11 shots. This thing can pump out a decent number of shots um, if you need it to. And that's it, really. That's all I've got to say uh, about the Doredio Dreadnought. Um, it's the most disappointing uh, Dreadnought kit out of all three, or, or f technically four. Would I recommend it? If you've been holding off on getting a, a Doredio um, because of the price, and I don't know, you, you just don't really like Forge World Resin, then um, yeah, I, I guess you could get it, but um, I, I just don't, if you've been holding off for that long, I don't think it would, I don't think it will um, meet your expectations uh, of, of a kit. Uh, I think the Leviathan and the Contemptors do now, depending on which sort of Leviathan you go for, but uh, compared to the other two, this is the, the weakest one. I will be very interested to see how the uh, Arachnus and Volkite uh, one turn out. I'm sure it'd be fine, uh, but again, it's just that posability. We lost a bit of posability with the Leviathan and the Contemptor, but this kit, you really do feel like you lost that um, posability. However, I guess it's a model that really needs the least posability out of them all. Um, so there is that. Anyway, what do you guys think of the Doredio Dreadnought? Please do put your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. It'd be great to hear from you. Thank you for joining me today. Thank you for watching. The Emperor Protects.